Hello everyone, uh, welcome to All Import. My name is Dinkar and I welcome you all in this session. I hope everybody is doing great, feeling healthy and fine. Once again, welcome to the morning of 26th of December and I am again here with the PIB session, especially for all of you. What has happened last uh, one or two days back, everything I have taken over here. Okay, so this is the last moments uh, of the year. So there is not much news because uh, it is a time of holidays and people are going for holidays. And even the ministries are also uh, just uh, writing their uh, summaries like what they have done for the whole year. So that is why uh, we have been uh, taking out some of the important news that has happened in the last one or two days, especially for all of you. And uh, again, we have come up with some of the important facts, important news for this uh, session today. So once again, uh, welcome to the morning session of the PIB and uh, thank you for joining uh, at such a, a time in the morning at a 9 a.m. I think uh, for everybody, those people who are working uh, professionals, they might be going to their offices and uh, some students might be there. It's, it's a difficult time of the morning uh, to attend the classes sometimes. But uh, if you take the dose in the morning itself, uh, that is the best thing that you can have. Okay. So because in the morning, whatever you learn is the best learning that you can have. Okay. So again, I welcome you in this morning and I hope everybody's uh, last day the Christmas has went well. Okay. So Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, thank you for joining the session. Before starting of the session, if anybody has anything to ask, if there anybody has any doubts, so they can simply let me know uh, regarding that. Fine. Uh, so I think uh, I can go ahead with my session. I'll be just waiting for one more minute uh, if anybody wanted to join the session. Otherwise, I will simply go off with my session. Okay. Uh, fine. So if there, if there, if anybody is there in the session, uh, they can say hi, hello to me in the chat box. If there is anybody in the session, okay. So let's start. Uh, actually, one uh, students have asked me, sir, if you can start a session with a quote. Okay, so I have. Uh, he has requested to me, so I have done. He fulfilled the request for that. So the quote of the day is. Learning is never done without error and defeat. Learning is never done without error and defeat. That means if you are not committing error and if you have not got defeated anywhere, that means you have not learned anything. Okay. Because whenever you are doing any new thing, so you are bound to do errors. You are going to get defeats because then only something new you can learn throughout the world. Those people who have done various type of discoveries throughout the world, they have done trials, error, they got defeated at various places. Then only they have come up with a very, very important invention in world, uh, for the world right now, what we are using right now. Okay, so that is why learning is never done without error and defeat. If you are doing errors, if you are getting defeat, so do not worry about that. That means you are on the right track. Okay, so again, learning is never done without error and defeat. Make sure that you find these words in your mind. Okay, so let's start with our session with the questions again. So the first question that I wanted to ask today is, MSP is recommended by who? MSP is recommended by who? Commission for Agriculture Cost and Price, Commission on Agriculture, Commission for Agriculture Price or Niti Aayog. Who recommend the MSP, Minimum Support Price? Who recommend Minimum Support Price, MSP? Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices, Commission on Agriculture, Commission for Agriculture Prices, Niti Aayog. I'm just waiting for 30 seconds. If anybody is there, they can answer that question. Who recommend MSP, Minimum Support Price, Commission for Agriculture Cost and Price, Commission on Agriculture, Commission for Agriculture Prices or Niti Aayog. Anybody who is there in the session, they can simply say the answer for that question. Is there anybody who is there in the session, they can say the answer. Okay, so let's see the answer of this question. The answer of this question is A, that is Commission for Agriculture Cost and 
prices the answer of uh, this msp is recommended by yes nile welcome to the session great but your answer is a little bit wrong msp is recommended by commission for agriculture cost and price c a c p c a c p okay so commission for agriculture cost and price so this is under the ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare okay so they recommend the prices report every year okay so there are five groups of commodities that are there okay one is for kharif crop they recommend good morning second is for rabi crop they recommend then third one is for sugar cane they represent fourth one they talk about the raw cot uh, raw jute and the fifth one is copra okay so they find out uh, the minimum support price what it can be done okay and then uh, they also being sent to various ministries for their recommendation right so national organization like fci nafi cotton corporation of india jute corporation of india everywhere these recommendation are being sent for their own Uh, recommendation like if there is any kind of suggestion they wanted to take so and then after that that is finalized by the commission for agriculture cost and prices okay now the next question the next question is msp is announced for dash crops for how many crops msp is announced 10 crops 17 crops 23 crops or 14 crops msp is announced for how many crops 10 crops 17 crops 23 crops or 14 crops guys be participative in the session okay msp is announced for how many crops msp is announced for how many crops 10 17 23 or 14 <clears throat> come on come on fast 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 minimum support price is announced for how many crops msp see you think okay nilay that's okay fine anybody else who who wanted to give an answer i think uh, some more people are there in the session be participative everybody guys please be participative okay msp is announced for how many crops okay don't don't uh, not a worry not a worry if you wanted to know in the starting today i have given a quote okay what is this quote the quote is this learning is never done without error and defeat you have to answer the question you don't have to worry about error or defeat nothing like that okay if you are answering the question that means you are learning don't worry about error and defeats okay yeah so msp is announced for how many crops yeah MSP is announced for how many crops? Anybody who wanted to participate in the session and wanted to answer the question, Akshay is okay. Yeah, yeah, answer, answer it fast. Akshay, answer. You wanted to answer. Let's see. The answer of this question is C. It is announced for twenty-three crops. Twenty-three crops. Now. Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices (CACP) recommend MSP for twenty-three crops. Okay, seven cereal crops. That's paddy, wheat, maize, shoram, pearls millets, barley, and ragi. Okay, so these are the seven cereal crops. Then we have five pulses: gram, tur, moong, urad, and lentil. And seven oil seeds: groundnut, rapeseed, mustard, soya bean, sesam, uh, sunflower. Uh, then niger seed. Then four commercial crop: copra, sugar cane, cotton, and raw jute. These are the crops for which MSP is declared by the Commission for Agriculture Cost and Price. Re they recommend. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. Uh, Nile. Okay. Now. Cabinet has recently approved MSP for copra for 2023 season. Okay, recently. Okay, slowly, slowly for all the crops it is going to come. Okay, so it is based on the recommendation of CACP Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices. Okay, because we have lot of uh, coconut growing states in our country, and uh, normally in the southern part only we are uh, making the cotton production. Okay. Kerala is there, Maharashtra is there, and uh, various other states are there. So 
there are two uh, type of uh, cotton we are talking okay fair average quality milling copra okay so that has been fixed at 10860 per quintal okay and there is a ball copra that is for 11750 per quintal okay so these are the two uh, things that has been set up okay so for milling one 270 rupees has got increased uh, from the previous season and for uh, the ball type 750 rupees has been increased from the last season okay so why why these uh, uh, msps are being increased because government has said that around 1.5 times of the weighted average cost we are going to give to the farmers okay so msp is in line with government uh, principles of providing 1.5 times of the weighted average cost okay because government has already announced in 2018 and 19 that around 1.5 times of the value we are going to give okay so that is why we wanted to increase the farmer income we wanted to uh, you know that we wanted to double the farmer income right doubling the farmer income right and that is why we wanted to provide these sector as to have a very remunerative returns okay and also to improve their welfare okay now we have organizations like nefi that is national agriculture cooperative marketing federation and we have nccf that is called national cooperative consumer federation and there uh, these are the central nodal agencies which are looking for procurement they are buying these copra and de has coconut under the price support mechanism okay right now the next question dmh11 is a type of what cotton rice wheat or mustard dmh11 is a type of what cotton rice wheat or mustard very important question dmh11 is a type of what okay nile very good very good uh, so that's that's really uh, a very good news because now since you are a farmer and you can easily relate this with uh, these topics right so really happy to know that uh, you are a farmer and uh, you are only providing us bread and everything because of your hard work we are getting everything so congratulations for that we are really indebted to you okay sn kartik kanan is saying d okay dmh11 dmh11 is a type of what okay come on answer answer dmh1 dmh11 is a type of what cotton rice wheat or mustard dmh11 is a type of what cotton rice wheat or mustard kya hota hai answer answer come on fast sn kartik has said that it is d that is mustard okay you uh, i'm giving you 30 seconds to answer this question 30 seconds anybody who wanted to answer this question they can answer okay okay i got it uh, sn uh, kartik uh, mustard yes okay so let's see the answer of this question the answer of this question is d dmh11 is a type of mustard it is a type of mustard okay now genetic engineering appraisal committee geac is set up under what for food safety and standard act 2006 wildlife protection act of 1972 environmental protection act of 1986 or geographical indication of the goods registration and protection act of 1999 okay geac general genetic engineering appraisal committee is being set up under who under which act uh, general uh, genetic engineering appraisal committee is being set up okay this is a committee which recommends whether we can use the various type of genetically engineered goods or not food products or not okay genetic engineering appraisal committee is set up under which act it's a easy question genetic engineering appraisal committee is set up under what 
I think people can uh, people can uh, give a guess also over here. Okay, uh, Nile is saying A. Okay, you have tried to give a logical guess to that. Okay, then anybody else who wanted to try this question? Fine, so we'll just going ahead with this answer. So the answer of this question is C, Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Okay. Yeah, it is Environmental Protect Act of 1986. Yes, uh, Karthik, uh, your answer is correct. Okay, Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Because whenever we are doing something genetic engineering in any kind of seed or anything, that means we will be releasing it. We will be releasing it in the environment. Okay, so that is why it has to come under the Genetical uh, Environmental Protection Act of 1986 because after that we are we will be using for uh, eating or something like that. Okay, <coughs> Sorry. so GEAC comes under Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Okay, now the first genetically modified plant that is commercially released in India is what BT cotton, BT brinjal. GM mustard or GM rice. First genetically modified plant commercially released in India is what? The BT cotton, BT brinjal, GM mustard or GM rice. First genetically modified plant commercially released in India. BT cotton, BT brinjal, GM mustard or GM rice. Pehla wala kaun sa hai? Genetically modified plant. Okay. So, Nile is saying A. That is BT cotton. Okay. Okay. Nile, in the meanwhile, you also tell what type of crops you grow. Since you are a farmer, so, ab kaun sa crop grow karte hai? Okay. So, Nile has changed his answer to D. Okay. Karthik is saying A, but uh, Karthik is not sure about that answer. Fine. So, I am just waiting for 30 seconds more. So, if there is anybody who wanted to try this answer, so they can try it. Okay. So, the answer of this question is A, BT cotton. BT cotton is the first genetically modified plant that is commercially released in India. Okay, BT cotton. Okay. Okay, okay. Nile is uh, doing uh, Arhar, Chana, cotton and wheat. Very good. And soya bean also. So, a lot of things were going. And so, because of you only, we are getting all these things. So, thank you so much. Yeah. So, right now, you know, there is a huge debate is going on. Because genetically, in G, uh, so, gen, uh, gen, uh, GEAC committee, has approved the release of GM mustard. Now it is up to government whether government wanted to approve it or not. Arhar ka dal hota hai. Arhar dal, tur dal, tur dal. Okay. Arhar call is called tur dal. Okay. Pulses. Okay. So right now GM mustard has been recently got approval from the genetic engineer appraisal committee for the release in the environment but it is up to government whether they want it to apply because lot of protest is going on regarding the gm mustard because people are saying that it will uh, totally create a problem in the environment it may uh, destroy the local environment and everything because if you try to uh, do the genetic engineering of any kind of crop it will hamper with the local crops it will destroy the traditional crops and all these things right so D uh, though dmh11 is a type of a, a mustard crop okay so dmh stands for dhara mustard hybrid 11 dmh okay so gm is genetically uh, modified is a type of a disruptive technologies 
it is a totally disruptive technology you can change anything in that seed in order to achieve various type of different different results okay earlier which was we are not able to do any kind of changes now we can do these changes at a genetic level okay in the lab you can see like how we can grow how we can make them resistance to pets pests and everything okay so so we wanted to overcome the various type of problems so that we can uh, achieve like the crops which are safe to humans animals and environment okay so that is why gm technologies are very very uh, uh, potential to the revolutionizing okay so earlier we have started with our green revolution okay green revolution was started earlier where we have utilized the high yielding variety of seed because earlier we we are utilizing the traditional crop but they are not sufficient for the population of our country so that is why we have started high yielding variety of the seeds and they have done three times four times production of the wheat so that is why now we are we are the food secure country of the world okay now gm technologies are also much needed because we wanted production in some specific uh, uh, specific food crops specific oil crops okay so that is why we wanted to look from the current scenario perspective because there is a lot of thing regarding the edible oils because we have to procure various type of edible oil plants from the outside because we are not able to produce that much okay because we wanted to make india atmanirbhar in edible oils okay because we are importing a lot of edible oil and the right and the demand is rising throughout okay because in 21 and 22 we have spent around 156800 crore to import 14.1 million tons of edible oils like palm oil soya bean oil sunflower oil canola oil okay so this much of forex reserve around 156800 crore forex reserve is going from our hand okay so we wanted to save that so that is why we wanted to introduce a genetically modified crop which can give a good amount of production in our country and we became self sufficient in oil production and since you know we are running for atmanirbhar bharat in every field we wanted to become atmanirbhar okay so because we have a shortfall in the domestic production okay so we have various type of oil seeds are there like soya bean grape seed mustard groundnut sesame sunflower uh, then we have niger is there okay lime seed is there so but they have a india is a much lower productivity india ki productivity bahut lower hai at if we compare with the global level okay so that is why we wanted to see okay so uh, the rape seed and mustard seed are a very very important oil seed are there in india grown at around 9.17 billion ton okay so very very low productivity uh, productivity uh, productivity we are having okay like 1281 kg per hectare and actually in the global level it is 2000 kg per hectare but in india it is 1281 hectare so there is a uh, shortfall of around 800 kg hectare and there is a very very big quantity okay so that is why we wanted to bring these hybrid seeds okay where we can change the genetic uh, part of that hybrid seed and we wanted to find out the various type of results as per our nature okay so this is uh, this is a uh, whole process goes on in the form of a bernasse or bastar system okay bernasse and bastar system is there which Uh, require which uh, the, the hybrid seed which we are producing requires a efficient mean sterility okay so that is why this system is utilized which restore the fertility okay because the fertility of the seed should be very important if they wanted to produce a very good quantity of uh, oil okay earlier there was a conventional cytoplasmic genetical meal sterility was there okay but it has a limitation but it has a limitation okay because it is not able to properly break down of sterility in the prop in the, in the condition which india is having okay so that is why genetically engineered bernasse or bastar system will be providing a very efficient and a robust alternative uh, alternative seed okay for the mustard and it it has already been deployed in the other countries like your canada australia america for many decades and that is why we wanted to bring these type of genetically engineering crops to innovate okay so why dmh11 has a significant yield okay so that has been already uh, earlier we were utilizing the varuna quality of 
seat. Okay, DMH has already been tested for three years against the national check of Varuna. Okay, earlier we were using Varuna and DMH 11 has also been checked. So on the comparison level, on the comparison level, DMH 11 has shown 28% more yield than the national check that is Varuna. Okay, if you put Varuna and if you put DMS, DMS will show 28 times or 28% more, not times, 28% more. Okay. So there are various type of GM crops uh, throughout the world. So India is the fifth largest cultivated area. Uh, uh, India is a uh, fifth largest cultivated area under GM crops. So around 11.4 million hectares in 2017. Okay. So right now this whole GM crop area is under the BT cotton. Okay. Because that is only the first crop that has been approved in our country. Okay. So the why, what is the meaning of this BT? BT cotton. BT means bacillus thuringiensis. Okay. That is called BT. Okay. It is a type of a soil bacterium which provide resistance against the ballworm insect and pest. Okay, so this is why we are trying to change the genetics so that various type of pest and various type of climatic condition do not affect the growth of these plants. Okay, so BT Brinjal in General uh, Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee 2017 has recommended the commercial use of BT Brinjal. Okay. They have recommended also in 2007 and that has been developed by the Maiko, that is Maharashtra Hybrid Seed Company in collaboration with Harvard University. But their initiative got blocked by various environmental groups Okay, in 2010. Now GM mustard has been approved by the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. Okay, And this uh, modified version has been developed by the Delhi University Center for Genetic Manipulation of Cop Plants Okay, using the Banzhare and Buster system technologies and again this protest has also started for not release of the GM mustard okay then BT brinjal is what it is a transgenic brinjal crop which utilizes the gene cry genes cry 1 AC gene and we put that bacillus thuringiensis into the brinjal okay by inserting a gene from the soil okay so because of that, it gives resistance against the insect like brinjal fruit and shoot borers, right? Then BT cotton, I have already told you, it has been developed by the Myco and uh, along with the American company Monsanto, okay? Now, what is the process of genetical uh, engineering, uh, what is the process of approval of the GM crops in our country? So genetic, uh, uh, genetically modified uh, crop is has to get approved by the GEAC. Okay, if there is any kind of research is happening, you have to go to Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. Is it is a top biotech regulator in our country? Okay, Genetical Engineering Appraisal Committee will check. They will check for your field trials. Okay, so GEAC comes under Environmental Protection Act. Okay, under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Okay, earlier this committee was known as Genetical Engineering Approval Committee. So under Environmental Protection Act, there are various type of rules of manufacturing, how you can use it, import, export, hazardous of microorganisms, because we don't know at what time these microorganisms can become hazardous. Okay, so it is very, a very, very difficult situation in order to control these microorganisms. So Genetic Engineering Approval Committee is responsible for granting permits or to conduct the experimental on a large scale open field trials. Okay they only grant the approvals for all these purposes okay so this is all about our genetical engineering appraisal committee gm mustard bt brinjal bt cotton and all these things now the next question dsci aiss award for best security practice in government sector was given to who uidai niti io international solar alliance or rbi DSCI AISS award for best security practice in government sector is been given to who? Okay, Nile, thank you for giving additional information regarding the palm oil policy. We, uh, we will be very delighted if uh, we became self-sufficient in the oil production in our country because uh, if you are still dependent on the oil, food oil for from other country, that means still you are far away from saying that you are a food secure country okay 
Okay, so may I know the answer of this question? Uh, DSCI AISS award for best security practice in government sector was given to which? UIDAI, Unique Identification Authority of India, then Niti Ayo, International Solar Alliance or RBI. Okay, Nile Singh A, Karatek is saying A. I think many people are there. I think five, uh, nine to ten people are there. They can also participate in the session at least. Okay, so the answer of this question is A, UIDAI. Okay, UIDAI is a Unique Identification Authority of India. Okay, so that has got the best security practice in government sector award. Okay, for what? For top data security award. Because UIDAI is having the data, fingerprints and uh, uh, various type of data, uh, biometrics data of the country people. Okay, hello Deepika. Okay, so Data Security Council of India, DSCI. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, that is a non-profit organization okay on data protection so this uh, dsci has been set up by nascom so they have awarded uidai for the role in securing the national critical aadhar infrastructure okay aadhar infrastructure we have all have the aadhar card and all and aadhar card is having all your biometrics data right so uidai has got the best security practice for safeguarding the residential uh, demographic and biometric data of everybody okay because we know that this is the age of cyber attacks various type of cyber security risk are there so they have been showing a efficient security framework efficient security governance and art of security in the infrastructure development so this is the first government organization to be privacy certified okay on a leading industry standard okay so privacy and data security so privacy certificators has been given that iso 27701 so whenever you get iso 27701 that means your company is a private privacy certified uh, company okay so if you get anybody who get this iso certification okay you know uh, iso certification if you get that means you are well above the various people right so ISO certification is for your uh, green uh, spaces, ISO certification is for the food, ISO certification is for the places, okay. So for the privacy, ISO 27701 is given. So UIDI has got the best security practice award and this is the first government organization to get this privacy security uh, certificate, okay. Now the next question, Dash has win best Global Competitive Power Company of India, Hydro Power and Renewable Energy Sector at Prakshame, Prakash May 15th Energia Award 2022. NHPC, Northeast Electric Power Company, Satluj Jal Vidyut Nigam, NTPC Hydro. Dash has won the best global competitive power company of India, hydropower and renewable energy sector at Prakash May 15th Enetria Award 2022. NHPC, Northeast Electric Power Company, Satluj Jal Vidyut Nigam or NTPC Hydro. May you know the answer of this question? Okay, Nile is saying A, hey, very good. Anybody else who wanted to provide an answer to this question? <clears throat> Sorry. What is an answer to that question? Okay, NHPC. Anybody else who wanted to provide an answer to this question? Karthik is saying A or D. Okay. Not sure. Fine, no problem. You are attempting, that is the best thing. Don't worry about whether you are doing right, wrong. Deepika is saying A, NHPC. Okay. So let's see the answer of this question. Answer of this question is NHPC. Okay, NHPC. Right. So now the next question under this NHPC is headquartered at NHPC is headquartered at which place? Noida, Faridabad, Gurugram, or Lucknow? NHPC is headquartered at which place? 
नोएडा फरीदाबाद गुरुग्राम और लखनऊ एन एच पी सी इज हेडक्वार्टर्ड एट विच प्लेस कार्तिक बी दैट इज फरीदाबाद ओके एन एच पी सी इज हेडक्वार्टर्ड एट विच प्लेस दिल्ली इज सेंट सी गुरुग्राम ओके कार्तिक ओके फरीदाबाद फाइन एनीबडी एल्स हू वॉन्टेड टू प्रोवाइड एन आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन Deepika is saying B, so let's see the answer. The answer of this question is B, Faridabad. Very good. B is Faridabad. Okay. So NHPC has won the best global competitive power company of India, hydro power and renewable energy sector. Okay. Under the Prakash May 15 Energy Award 2022. So why this award has been conferred to NHPC is that because they have shown a leadership in the hydro power sector. Okay. because they have a gross asset of more than 7000 megawatt of power generation from the hydro power so this award is recognized for nhpc since nhpc has more than 5000 megawatt of project that are still under construction and they have a plan of 7000 megawatt plus plan for solar capacity addition also okay so this is so uh, this is showing uh like uh, the nhpc is having a solar energy capacity of uh, sorry a renewable energy capacity of 7000 megawatt okay and more than 5000 uh, megawatt of projects are still under construction so they have a ambitious 7000 megawatt plus plan for the solar energy capital addition so that is why this award has been given okay so nhpc is a largest organization for hydro power in our country okay so they all uh, they take all the activities related to conceptualization commissioning and uh, construction of the hydro projects in our country and they are now moving into a diversified field also in the renewable energy diversified field in the field of your solar also and wind also so right now nhpc has a capacity of installed base of 7071 megawatt from 24 power station okay and they are also running two joint ventures they are running two joint ventures okay because uh, there are various places because the since nhpc produce the water from uh, produce the power from the water using the dam so dams can be only built where the rivers and various type of uh, reservoirs are there so that is why we have to construct the dams at various type of unfavorable condition uh, difficult where the difficult laws are there some law and order problems are there some locations are sometimes are very inaccessible remote locations are there so this is a uh, uh, this is like a recognition to the nhpcs that have done and bring out so much of power generation from the hydro power okay so the chairman of nhpc is shri rajiv kumar vishnoi and the nhpc is headquarter at faridabad in haryana okay yes international solar alliance is at gurugram now dash system is present in train to prevent accident dash system is pre uh, present in the trains to prevent the accident kavach raksha kavach अंतरण अवरण डैश सिस्टम इज प्रेजेंट इन ट्रेन टू प्रेजेंट टू प्रिवेंट द एक्सीडेंट वॉट इज द सिस्टम दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द ट्रेन टू प्रेजेंट टू प्रिवेंट द एक्सीडेंट ओके कार्तिक इज सिंग ए दैट इज कवच नीले इज सिंग ए दैट इज कवच okay dipika is also saying a kavach so the answer of this question is kavach okay so kavach system is for prevention of the train accident so kavach is for train collision avoidance system so this kavach is called as train collision avoidance system okay so this all being developed by the indigenous equipments okay for prevention of the train accidents right and because sometimes human errors can happen okay because humans are people who are only people only so sometimes they may commit mistakes okay sometimes uh, signal passing at the danger location sometimes over speeding they can do sometimes they pass on the signals without uh, properly understanding that okay so since there are lot of complexities are present in the trains operation okay because there is a very very heavy rolling stock is there okay so that is why uh, the uh, way on the side station tracks kavach system is being installed okay 
so right now around 1455 route kilometer of the southern railway with 77 number of the locomotives are there which have been deployed with the covered system okay so right now cover system work in a progress uh, it is already in progress in delhi mumbai and delhi havara corridor that is 3000 route kilometer still, still uh, is the work is still progressing on so what is the benefit of this covered system covered system is for controlling the speed of the train by automatic application of the brakes okay automatic application and repeating of signal aspects okay foggy weather is there auto whistling because sometimes the driver don't know when to whistle and then so sometimes there is auto whistling at the crossing gates auto whistling at the crossing gate should be there so that is why we have created this indigenous technology indigenous technology which we can also export to the other countries okay so, <coughs> so we wanted to make india a export hub so these are the various important type of technologies which we can utilize for uh, sharing these with the other countries and we can uh, earn some kind of forex reserve under that okay so this is the covered salient feature okay so that controls the speed of the trains by automatic application of the brakes okay repeat sideline signal okay for higher speed and foggy weather okay then they also looking for continuous update of the movement authority auto whistling at the level crossing gates are there then collision avoidance by direct loco to loco communication that means if one train is coming from here other train is coming from here if they see that a distance is getting reduced okay so there is a auto to or loco to loco communication that can happen okay then they or provide sos in case of any mishap that can happen okay if there is any mishap happen automatically the signals will be sent to the various headquarters and automatically there will be sudden uh, uh, people will be uh, taking care of the people okay now the next 10th question dash is the target for the textile products by 2030 dash is the target for textile products by 2030 dash is the target for textile products by 2030 dash is the target for textile products by 2030 okay kartik is saying 100 Karthik is uh, sorry. Uh, Deepika is saying B. That is one fifty. Okay, but Deepika is not sure. No problem. Okay. Anybody else who wanted to provide an answer to this question? Okay. Nilay is saying B. I think. Okay. Anybody else who wanted to give an answer to this question? So answer of this is C. Hundred billion. Hundred dollar. Hundred billion. is the target for textile products by 2030 okay so center target to achieve us dollar 100 billion export for textile products by 2030 okay so we know that our textile sector is a very very labor intensive sector around 45 million people are being employed in this sector okay and it is just next to the agriculture agriculture employs the maximum number of people and there is second one is the textile sector and it is the oldest industry in our country because since the time of britishers and before that because most of the textile products you know uh, is being uh, throughout the country in the maharashtra uttar pradesh these are the places where most of the textile the west bengal okay this is the oldest industry which is employing the people and even the textile is providing a huge amount of forex reserve because in the earlier times when india was having a quarter of the world gdp before britishers came to india india was having 25% of the world gdp india is contributing 25% of the world gdp before the britishers came to india and the maximum uh, product that has been sold at that time is the textile product because people are very fond of indian textile okay right now also people are fond of indian textile because from india the we send the clothes outside and we get the finished product back in india okay arvin mills is there okay arvin mills create various kind of jeans cloth so they send the cloth to the various countries and from there they just put a stamp on that and they sell it back to our country okay 
so there are two segments that is unorganized and organized segment is there so on unorganized we have a small scale they utilizes some traditional tools and methods are there okay the hand looms are there handicrafts is there and sericulture they are utilizing and organized sector is something where we are utilizing the proper modern machinery okay and technologies like spinning and all these things right so it is contributing of india's 2.3 gdp production okay gdp india's 2.3% gdp is coming from the textile sector and it is the sixth largest producer of the technical textile and 6% of the global share of india is there in the textile okay so one of some various initiative that are other other initiative that are been taken by the government is in the field of textile is AT, atufs that is amended technology upgradation fund scheme there are various type of new technologies we can utilize in the textile sector then six scheme for integrated textile park that means there everything will be in a cluster based sitp then summer scheme for capacity building then providing them with a the skill knowledge and everything then power power tech india so there are various type of new research which can happen and development that can happen in this field so everything has been collaborated and major these are the various initiatives that are being taken in the textile production in our country okay so this is how the textile and apparel export has happened in 2017 and 18 37.55 billion was that and then 18 and 19 again it has increased to 38.4 in 2019 and 20 35.18 and because this is a covid period time okay it is still going on but right now from april to october 21.15 but by 2030 we are expecting that we will be crossing this dollar 100 billion okay we will be crossing at least 100 billion by 2030 because uh, we may we are expecting that our textile production may be boosting uh, in the next uh, year or a day of uh, year after coming and we'll be able to achieve a uh, us dollar 100 billion of export of textile product by 2030 okay so guys thank you so much all the best happy learning and if you have any query any question you can ask me <coughs> you have any question any query anybody has any query they can ask me uh please ask uh, you do one thing kartik uh, please uh, leave the comment on the comment box and do one thing you just write an email to support at olive board dot in they will sure shot will be answering you okay uh from my side there is a mcq series that is going on in the olive board there is rbi foundation course that is going on on saturday i am myself is taking at 9 pm then there is a live mint session that is going on at 9 pm every wednesday okay these are the topics that are going see kartik if you take the courses your or all, all things will be sorted out because uh, there you can contact us there you can uh, write an email to us and everything okay right so revision class will also happen but for that you have to be part of our courses because since we are providing many things in the uh, channel that is free of cost so that you may not suffer but sometime we also need some kind of support from everybody so this is also a kind of like if you wanted to take our courses you can support us by taking our courses okay okay thank you thank you thank you kartik yes yes uh, i know i know because earlier you were not attending uh, i think you are not participating in the session today again you have started participating so please just participate in the session like this so it it looks very interesting and uh, you will also learn many things okay
right so again i wanted to show you one thing in the starting what i have said this learning is never done without error and defeat again i am giving it learning is never done without error and defeat that is a quote of the day because one student have asked me sir if you can start a day with a quote so today from today i have started the day with a quote learning is never done without error and defeat you have to participate you have to do that you will do the error you will get defeat but learning keeps on happening and this learning will take you to the top okay okay yes yes thanks karthik thanks karthik and uh, nilay actually we cannot provide the pdf okay because this is of the olive board we cannot provide the pdf you have to read it from the video itself okay you have to read it from the video itself okay video se questions dekh lo na koi problem thodi na hai ek jagah pe note kar lo ho jayega no no this is every day pib this is every day pib session that is going on every day morning 9 am we are doing all the effort every day we are finding out the information we are sharing with you so that you don't have to wait for a week every day this makes you a little bit disciplined also because you have to sit in the morning at morning 9 am you just sit out and then you have to read out so slowly slowly four four 10 10 questions you just read out so automatically you will have a good amount of questions that will be there in your hand okay we are taking out the questions we are taking out the information from various places pib we are reading that news we are just bringing that at least you can sit over here and you can make sure that uh, you don't have to read the pib then okay you don't have to read the pib then because since we are covering everything so you don't have to read for that you just have to sit and make sure that you learn you participate in the session nothing more than that okay i hope everybody got that okay so my just my request is that if you can provide some of the beautiful comments on the comment box once the session gets over that will be very uh, beneficial for us so that we know what is that if you are sitting in a video lecture live video lecture you can ask your doubt also right you can ask your doubts also pdf aap pdf to milega pdf you will get if you are taking the courses you will get the pdf and there will be live classes that will be also happening for you okay in the live classes you can ask the questions also sir mere ko ye doubt hai mujhe ye nahi aa raha hai sir mere ko ye bata dijiye ye sab aapko batayenge theek hai pdf mein to aap padhte rahoge fir aapko doubt hoga to kaise puchoge right i hope you got it fine so i think uh, this is all for today i will meeting you again at uh, 9 am tomorrow in the morning so bye bye take care and have a nice day and please follow all the covid 19 protocols because uh, bf7 uh, proto uh, sorry b87 i think or what is that uh, new uh, variant of the covid b uh, b87 is there okay uh, it has already been uh, reported in india so make sure that you follow all the covid 19 protocols and uh, that is creating havoc in the china and so make sure that you remain safe okay do not do any kind of leniency anywhere and make sure that you remain safe and uh, just all the best for your preparation bye bye take care and have a nice day